Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2015. I'm sitting here with Dr. Rebecca Parsons, who gave a presentation on microservices here at the conference. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, go, microservices, what, what, was, what was the talk about? So, and how did you come to give a presentation about microservices? What, what was uh, uh, the driving force for that, that, that topic? Well, I've, I've had a long-standing interest in, in architecture, and um, I, I speak a lot about uh, evolutionary architecture um, as, a, as a way of making systems that are more adaptable, uh, because the, the system requirements that our business users are placing on systems are the, the, the rate of change is just continuing to increase. Right. And so we need systems that are much more uh, adaptable and evolvable than they were before. And microservices is a relatively new architectural style mm -hmm. uh, that is gaining traction and done well. Uh, a microservices architecture does allow you to make changes as fast as possible. Okay. And so this is a, a nice approach to architecture that uh, achieves this this goal of, of, of an evolutionary architecture. Okay, and and I know that you're coming from a, a much deeper background than somebody who's just read an article <laughs> on microservices <laughs> as a CTO at ThoughtWorks. Um, you know, so was this something that's evolved from pain that you're seeing at your clients uh, in in trying to figure out ways to better solve their problems? Not just our clients. Um, okay. You know, organizations like like Netflix, um, um, Amazon, others are are looking at architecture textural styles that are very similar to, to this. So this is really uh, grown out of mm -hmm. the issues that, that, that people are facing with systems that do have to be incredibly responsive, mm -hmm. incredibly performant, um, and, and um, also uh, responding to changes in, in required functionality. And so it's, it's been our clients, but it's also been other people in the industry. Right. And, and it's, it's funny to see this topic. It, it seems to me there's two camps. There's the DHA and his love of the monolith, and then, then there's on the other side there's uh, people who are dealing with a, a, a polyglot problems. I know you were a polyglot <laughs> programmer person, uh, but the poly ambiguous problems <laughs> that are just in all different uh, types of ecosystems, not just a Ruby one single mm -hmm. stack environment. Uh, you know, what is it, if I'm looking and I'm trying to evaluate, I've got a Rails app and I'm, I'm doing this, serving this app and I'm trying to figure out, hey, does this microservices technology, is this appropriate for, you know, growing my application or I'm working in an environment that, you know, we have a monolith, should I start thinking more about microservices? What, what are some of those thresholds? that somebody might want to use to evaluate this, this, whether they should move towards this technology? Well, one thing is how easy or difficult you're finding it to make the kinds of changes that your mm -hmm. users are, are expecting. I mean, a well-designed monolith can be the right decision. Mm -hmm. um, you would, would also want to consider things like um, uh, the, the, the deployment foot. Print. Right. When, if, if you're going to scale a monolith, you're going to scale the whole monolith. Right. Um, and so, if you, you know, if you're doing horizontal scaling, um, and you need four of them, you're going to have four of the entire monolith. Right. Um, there might only be one part of that infrastructure that does need to scale, yeah. uh, but you don't have that choice if you're a monolith. So, looking at the kinds of problems that you're running into with the monolith, it may be that it makes sense to, to stick with the monolith. One of the things I spent a lot of time talking about uh, in in, in the presentation were some of the some of the issues and the implications. Um, microservices architectures are more complex right. than a single monolith, and so you want to make sure that the reason you're going to the microservices ar architecture is sound. Right. So it sounds like if I have maybe an email component of my application that is the one place that I'm always seeing performance bottleneck problems, and I'm spinning up new instances just to support that aspect, I can maybe look at exercising that one exercising that one piece into a microservices. I mean, is it an all or nothing, or can I do piecemeal? Oh, you, you, you can definitely do piecemeal. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I can just 
it, again, that sounds like even just good refactoring, uh, like an object. If I see something that's doing too much and I have a God object, mm-hmm. maybe pull that out. I mean, is, is a lot of this stuff uh, with microservices really just taking object-oriented programming concepts to a next level? I'm not sure I would just tie it to, to object orientation because, okay. you know, there's, you know, that that is one way of looking at it. And, and you know, some of the, the, the concepts from domain-driven development, which people tend to associate more with object orientation, although it, it, it doesn't have to be. Um, but um, those concepts of, of apply. And, and a lot of the thinking about what constitutes good boundaries, okay. it's it's the same, it, they're the same sort of questions that are just being asked at, at a larger level. And when you think about any time you start with a monolith, you know, you're probably not going to take a big sledgehammer and smack right. it on the, and break it up. And you're, you're going to progressively pull things out. And so, yes, for a time you might have, you know, a, a small number of services working with a bigger monolith. And as, as, as needs arise, you could pull more and more stuff out of that monolith. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mike.